what affects these people, how, what has happened in their lives and how their lives will progress and what happens in the past and what will happen in the future. But one of the most significant things that is happening today in the job market is that digital skills to the outlook of the first of the 21st century skills are being affected greatly on how people behave and how the skills of people are being affected. In a recent OECD study, and Randstad, Randstad is one of the greatest companies in the world that hires most of people and puts daily into job nearly two and a half million people. Therefore, they have an effect on how, and they can measure of how people behave in the work environment and how this has been affected. For those who don't know my background, I have been a board director of Randstad for 22 years, and then I moved on to academia. So here we are. I thought that this study had a lot of um, input into the today's reality of what is happening. And the types of jobs that particularly today are continuing to be on demand is software developers, programmers, engineers. And we're going to see how these jobs have outpaced um, all the other jobs and what's going to happen in the future with regards to these jobs and how they affect people's markets, job opportunities, businesses, universities, and, uh, and particularly the uh, e-learning the e environment. In the overlooking, just very quickly, an overview of some of the most important job markets, we can see the fluctuation of how countries to countries, whether they're into the bread exit or outside the bread exit, uh, when we measure people's jobs, whether they are the west side of the Atlantic or the east side of the Atlantic, there are similarities. For example, in Canada, we have less effect, we have more effect in, in Spain and Italy. Uh, we focus on the south because there's more unemployment, there are less skills maybe available and less jobs. To the contrary, there are more jobs, but more unemployment. And that is the non-equalization of what is happening today in the job market. But if you go further and we look at the five most prominent digital skills categories that the job market, it's facing this advanced data analytics. And they're spreading 15 times 0.5 faster than the demand in any other skills. Cyber security, for example, is sparking a big brain risk in businesses, in government, in cybersecurity, is giving a risk in the management fields, and is seeing growing investment, educating people, companies investing in cybersecurity. Governments are investing heavily in cybersecurity. Therefore, job demands are going to increase. And if we look at programming, it's starting to play the major key role in variety of fast-growing job categories. Imagine in education. Now, are the teachers going to be replaced by robotics teaching? We'll we're going to have a look how that is going to be affected. And we'll look at what is the job market and what the job seekers are perceiving during their studies. Therefore, automations and the internet are fueled by growth and popularity in small homes. People want to have smart homes. They want to go home and they want to preheat their home. They want to open the windows. I'm giving you simple examples that are more complicated. How we program the wind, how we program the sun into our home. How do we program our food? And how do we program our lifestyle? Those are affecting and those need programming, need cyber security, because if you can open your door, from your car, then anybody can open it. Now, if we look at digital skills that everybody is mentioning, digital, 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 and how they relate to business and how they relate to sales, how do we attract digitally the desire of people to buy? So if we use nearly all productive sectors in the economy, and we look at digital skills which are connected to those businesses and sales, they're spreading 8.5 faster than any other skill. Therefore, sales skills are related now to digitalization. If you open your Facebook, your TikTok, your Instagram, you're bound to have bought products. I do, I buy, 
I, I never hardly go into shops anymore. I buy everything digitally. Now, they're using nearly all productive sectors of the economy, as I said, from clothes to pharmaceuticals. You can even buy a, a home digitally. Um, strongest growth is seen basically in the social media because those are the medias that are used by people. Therefore, they need more job seekers, more jobs are opening in the social media um, employers. Now, four priority actions to be addressed also by policymakers and businesses is learning at all career stages that employers who do not have recycling upskilling strategies and they're not investing in their people to give them a significant competitive disadvantage, they will find themselves behind the market. They will find themselves not attracting the right job seekers. And that is very important that businesses, government and decision makers have to invest significantly into upskilling and having a strategy in investing into their people. Number one, it will build loyalty, it will build their skills, and the company will remain competitive edging into the marketplace. Therefore, companies and their employees can remain marketable, and they're implementing focused learning, development strategies with purpose in their targeting individuals. Today, university schools and other institutions focus in mass uh, teaching in mass learning and quantity learning rather than individual. Companies today need to address individual skills. They need to, they need to address their talent. So we are coming into boutique education. Maybe you've never heard that before. Boutique education is that I design for your skills, your course. I know it sounds crazy, We've never thought of that. It's like food today. <laughs> Next clip designs this food individually for me. If I'm diabetic, I can go to Nestle and they can design for me my food. They actually can design the food for your unborn child. It's crazy, but that is happening. They design food for unborn uh, children. Therefore, I can design my children's education to my desires by upskilling the skills before they're even born. I know it's crazy, isn't it? Now, how do I assess what is their need? I create that need. Like artificial intelligence predicts and designs what you actually need and what you're actually thinking and what you're actually doing. Has anybody worked with a tool called Mind reader, yes, you have. As simple as that. It reads your mind. You put a word and it writes down immediately what your mind is thinking. Therefore, companies and their employees remain marketable if they can individually design their education. I've given emphasis to that because this is how the world is changing, whether we like it, yes or no. Therefore, teaching creativity will also change eventually, and it will need to be matched. Now, the policy shape encourages study in future skills, giving people guidance and incentives to help them develop their own workforce and skills becomes even more inclusively with digitalization. As I say, they accelerate the economy. And that is when we redefine and we renew engagement with employees. So, all researchers and this particular research have demonstrated that employees want sympathetic employers. They don't want hard employers anymore. Post-COVID, the mind has changed, the attitude has changed. We start thinking and using empathy more and more in our daily lives. We actually had empathy, we just didn't realize how we could eloquently articulate it. Today we stand and we can articulate what is empathy and we can also show it with our behavior and we can measure that behavior in assessing it and how do we assess it i'll come back to that as well so since the pandemic expectations have changed companies they need to provide a job and of course a paycheck 
people need to go home and feed their families. If we look at how the world is even changing, I take example from where I live. The minimum salary is 3,000 euros, and TikTok is not going to be abandoned. As a matter of fact, it's been enhanced. We live in a society where transportation is free, has to become free. It's the first country that offered it. Will the rest of Europe follow the example? We need to, we need to be seen. But somebody has to lead the example. Somebody has to roll the carpet for the future. Therefore, employers have to embrace flexibility. So does education has to become more flexible. I love my old professor who used to sit behind the desk and read, hiding behind his computer or not. I don't want that anymore as a student. I want a TED dynamic to be presented to me. I want interactivity, I want games, I want gamification, I want Kahoot, I want more and more, and I'm demanding as a student that my professors adapt to the future. Therefore, if I'm going to enable digital natives and nomads to operate in another alternative way, governments, businesses, education need to improve their policies and their practices. Universities have way too many policies, way too many, um, too many restrictions. I haven't touched anything. <laughs> the table. I can continue on the presentation. Um, researchers find out that the South has more barriers than the North. In the South, in the conversation yesterday here, um, it has been decided that a contribution of 1,000 euros will be paid into the mutual fund for the increased salaries of the educators. That is not allowed to be happening. That is old fashioned. That is really behind the times. We need to liberate education. We need to remove restrictions as we have removed barriers of frontiers. The same thing needs to happen to universities. We're not looking for anarchy. We're not looking for police to pass into the universities, but we need progress. And we need not only digital progress, but we need to change the set of mind, the set of behaviors. So digital um, revolution can come in reality through the people, through the students, not just on computers and on field. We need to see it practically. We need to feel it. And that's very important. By feeling it, the student will feel it and he will engage more into his education progress. Uh, it's coming, but it's a big technology. I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> so, if they embrace the flexibility, then the employers consequently will also uh, embrace the flexibility. There we are. And by consequence, we'll have change of policy, change of ideology, change of behavior, change of receptivity. Now, the emotional intelligence that we all use, and it's such a buzzword, it has a great emphasis in the, in the workplace. It is important, it is expected to increase in the future job market. Aspects of emotional intelligence will have a strong sense of self-awareness to people. They will identify their own strengths, their own weaknesses, and they will use their own advantages. As I said earlier on, empathy, the world is shifting in focus, is becoming more and more from the company results to well-being of their employees, and is creating self-motivation. Companies who drive shareholding through their people by making more use from them, they will succeed short term. Long term, they will have to bring and understand its people, and they will need to put their emotions into practice. Post-COVID is becoming more and more um, necessary. One of the big revolutions that happened post-COVID in businesses, and I know it's very out of what I'm going to say, suits and ties are not wearing anymore. We've realized during COVID 
What a pretense society we have been living in. It has brought a lot of reality to people and it has played a real role. And digitalization has really helped it because in order that we keep living and earning our living during COVID, we had to digitalize, commu communicate with each other and work and earn our living. Therefore, it's becoming more and more uh, of a necessity. Therefore, the creativity, not just as an art creativity, as I say, it's the heart of most jobs and the fundamental soul elements is the digital future. And why? Is what drives innovation. Without innovation, we have no progress. Without innovation, we have no job market. And that is what is missing, what we have been missing in the past. We didn't give enough attention to innovation and sustainability. And all of a sudden, post-COVID, we started talking about innovation, sustainability, about time. We talk about our project and we say, what is the sustainable future of this project five years from today? If you all know, well, you should know, you're one month from closing. <laughs> Therefore, all that will translate into leadership and all these strong leadership skills will help team members feel inspired. Inspiration is key. If you can't inspire as a leader, nobody will follow you. As a leader, you need to inspire, and that is the role of the leader. His first skill is to inspire his troops. If he can't inspire his troops, you have no results. And I see it. I work with so many universities. I go to universities where I can see the leadership inspiring. And you can see it, it translates into the feel of the university, how the university looks, how the university is dressed, how the professors behave, how the meetings perform. You feel it as soon as we walk in. You go to universities, everything is out of place, everything is dilapidated, everything is not in place. And you feel it. And you talk to students and they are totally demotivated. Leadership is key. Therefore, if you combine a number of different soft skills that we come back to our reality and the knowledge-based skills, we expect to be a prime importance in the future of the job market. That is why this was most interesting uh, project for the European Union. It had inspirational future needs that the market could see and inspire people. Now, how does the entrepreneurial mindset uh, comes into all this? And how do we bridge the gap between all those skills and all those people? Well, we're in to reinvent a company model and processes and service offerings and client engagements with a digital first approach. Firms will need innovative and disruptive thinking. So does a university. If you bring out your syllabus and it's every year the same, and it's every year repetitive, and it's every year boring, as I say, it becomes even more boring. And therefore your students drop, the performance drop, your ranking drops. If you want to keep it up, you need to have a disruptive thinking. You need to re-engineer the courses. You need to engineer your syllabus, your people, your students will only get re-engineered if leadership is re-engineered in its approach and its creative thinking. Certainly critical thinking is a major role into this, plays a major role. But in a multi-language fluency where people, according to the study, learn a second language, might increase an individual's income by 10 to 15 percent, imagine a multilingual uh, environment, how it increases. Isn't it surprise, not surprise, excuse me, that Luxembourg has 3,000 minimum salary? It's a multilingual society. German, French, Luxembourgish, English, Portuguese are the five most spoken languages. A child of four speaks four languages, one language per year by the age of four. Now, will they learn the languages fluency? No, they will not. They will grow, but they will have a very good knowledge and a very good writing, spoken and understood knowledge that will allow them to enter the job market. However, speaking several languages will increase one's marketability for jobs, especially those in multinational corporations 
Yes, Switzerland, Singapore, Luxembourg, New York, Frankfurt are key examples of nearly European uh, cities are. Athens has become a multilingual center. Rome, Madrid, Barcelona, all the capitals in the Scandinavian countries. Those are fast advancing by the language skills as well. They contribute. And in view of COVID-19 pandemic, more than 90% of learners were affected globally. So digital renovation of the teaching system. And that was a sharp rise on online learning courses, enrollments, and of course the accelerated cost effectiveness, the broad style, time and space flexibility, fewer disruptions compared to face-to-face -face learning. As a matter of fact, at my age, I learned Luxembourgish during COVID because I needed to. And it was much faster to do that sitting in my own place, in my own home, around my own friendly environment. And therefore, all these elements brought the factors of affecting e-learning to the adoption era. Absence of the teacher and the mentor were a risk. The lack of peer contact, the decreased motivation and the ineffective time management. There are the pluses, there are the minuses. We don't have to just glorify the opportunity of e-learning that is always the best. It has its pluses, it has its minuses. So those are the risks. According to the student perception, the blended learning methods have emerged as a better method. So e-learning is not only a kind of virtual education to deliver content in digital ways, but also it's a real time and simultaneous interactions between the learners and the instructors. Education has become global, correct? Whether you like it, yes or no. Those who, are, who haven't as yet become global and they haven't understood that regionalization is not enough, they will be behind. You need to move out of your region. Before we used to say, I want to be the best university in my city, or it, then it became the region. Now you, you fight for ranking globally. And those are the list people try to, um, to achieve. In a recent uh, EU uh, capacity building, um, we were in a certain Asian country and we were granted honorary PhD because of our work that we did. It, it was a great honor. And then I said to my colleagues, guys, don't you dare put it on your CV. And I said, why? I said, you wish to have your CV with 10,875 ranking university PhD? Please do be my guest. If I'm aware, then the youngster is aware, then the guy who's attending that university is aware as well. Therefore, education globally needs also to be uplifted. We're moving towards that way. Education is global. Factors affecting e-learning as well is a system quality. One's perception of the usefulness of digital knowledge sharing in platforms, information quality, reliability, response time, content, availability. I see systems which are far more than two clicks. I walk away. I go into a website. As soon as I have a difficulty, more than two clicks, then I'm out. I go for another one. If I, if I don't do my job in booking.com with two clicks, I go to Momondo. I go to X. I go to Z. I want fast, efficient. I want the platform reliability. And I'm only an individual. And I'm only talking from my perspective. Imagine in a global market what happens in the education. Education is more and more global. Therefore, the results show that this behavior was affected by each individual's self efficiency as individuals believe in their ability to complete tasks and achieve goals. And if there is a psychological factor influencing an individual's adoption to new technologies. How do we measure that? Professor Martin in 1949, he said that people in the world behavior 
have a measurable aptitude. We have two measurable aptitudes, I Schenk for IQ and Professor Martin 1945, interpreted by Professor Thomas in a tool called Thomas International Assessment Center. What it does, it measures your aptitude in the workplace. 15 questions, look how digitally the world has advanced. Can tell your behavior, can tell your personality profile analysis that matches your psychological factor, how you're influenced by adoption of new technologies. If you're a leader, it will show. If you're an influencer that you affect sales, it will show. If you're a doer, a lawyer who implements the law, it will show. And if you are a computer inputter, it will also show. Those who lie have an invalid profile. I know, it's amazing. And there is only one principle in psychology that measures people's attitude. 1945, Professor Marsden. All the rest are interpretation. They are commercialized interpretations. Let's move. Therefore, <laughs> The effort expectancy and the amount of effort made by individuals from using e-learning and the factors are the teacher's characteristics, the teaching materials, the quality, the design of the learning contents. When I go on our projects and I look at the quality of the contents of the modules, sometimes I pull my hair and I cry. And I say, for God's sake, these people are PhD. Professors, can they not do better? Because most of, as you know, of the European uh, projects in education involve university. And I look at the design and the learning contents and I'm amazed. However, the effort expectancy also as a psychological factor affected individuals in adoption of the new technologies in the universities and the teaching world has a lot of differences in culture and dimensions. And the socio-demographic traits of students are closely connected to the educational and professional pathways. And those need to bridge, to be bridged. And those using digitalization is possible, but it needs work. We advance faster than sometimes our mind does in, um, in technology, but Sometimes we have to sit back and critically apply our critical thinking and say, what are the consequences of this move? What will happen if I do this? If I have a problem, if I do not sit and find a solution as we did, how will I bridge the gap of unsuccessful project marketing? Therefore, I sit, I cooperate, huh? and I find the solution and I work together with my colleagues in achieving the target. And that, is, that gap needs to be bridged in, diff in differences in, culture, in cultural differences as well. If we are only in Dubrovnik teaching only the Dubrovnik students, we're very secure. We come out of our box and we go to the Netherlands where we have multicultural society. We go to Greece where there is a multicultural society. Because whether we like it or so no, times are up, my friends, in Greece. We do not only have Greek students. You have a multicultural student environment. And it's time to adopt. And it's time to change. And those professional pathways will only happen by progressive and critical thinking. And this also influence. The adoption of e-learning is directly tolerated in the behavioural intention and development by social influence. The governmental policies affect the social pressure and competition, the rewards policies, all these contribute. And the fear of the COVID-19 pandemics will always be there, but moderating the impact, which statistically significantly had a favourable effect on social influence for the adoption of the new teaching and learning technologies is immense. You know it, you know it, we feel it, we live it, that's why we are here. And the facilitating conditions, the availability of sufficient resources and support for proper utilization of technology. The digital cap and the digital divide will lead education inequalities and they are now becoming a global problem. 
Global education has global problems. Local education has local problems, regional and regional problems. Therefore, according to the global survey conducted by the AAU, financial reduction is the most significant challenge that both students in HIEI are currently facing. And the prediction is that especially those private education sectors with financial resources heavily relying on enrollments are going to be affected for sure. Therefore, they need to bridge their gap and find a more, let's say, adaptable commercial way of the lobbying, of having more social, um, um, let's say, um, benefactors. Today, universities give honorary, uh, they create uh, events, they create, they lobby in all sorts of ways in order to collect not only money, but support from the industry, particularly from the government, from chambers of commerce and so on and so on. When we go to ASEAN on a capacity building and we talk to them about lobbying, they look at us as we are the Draculas that have never heard of the thing because always the government gives them the thousand euros to do this. There's no marketing, there's no globality. Everything has to be directed to filling a form. The students are always welcome to become students. They finish their four years. They do a master's with a 15 page presentation. You're laughing. I was crying. And then halfway through the master, they're invited to participate to PhD with a 35 page PhD. And by the time they finish master and the PhD, they're already teaching in the university because they call it retraining. And by the time they graduated master PhD, the fully fledged university teachers. And there we go in a capacity building and we wonder why they don't understand. And then we do a research and we find out why. Factors are technology and therefore the significant number of technologies that have developed for e-learning are immense. They use performance, expectancy, they facilitate the online system login installation and all these download problems have been overpassed. Today you log in, tap tap quickly, you're on the platform, off you go. You don't even have to pay anymore. Huh? You can have learning free course from e-learning. So due to the relatively <coughs> low accessibility rate on internet services, gadgets and related technology in some developing nations, distance learning through online channels continues to be difficult in some countries. The perception that we have penetrated through the internet in Europe at the total 80 or 90 percent, we are far away from that. We're still at 70, 75, maybe. Therefore, behavioral intention at the level of students' commitment to e learning adoption and acceptance in order to meet their academic goals, that the students are highly engaged to doing e-learning activities are able to get over both spatial and temporal limitations, but it versus the students who engage in e-learning. And at the low level, typically they find it rather boring. They find it totally boring sometimes. And they are uninteresting, and they are prone to misinterpretation. The uninteresting parts create that interpretation because they can't be bothered. So some more negatives, because not everything is glorified, not everything is advanced. There are also the weak points. But just to very quickly look at the new teaching and learning models and how learning experience involve combination of variable uh, methods presentations, online whiteboard, pre-recorded video lectures, flipped classroom, game-based teaching, glass lock, and they live chatting discussion boards forums. Those who were in draw and they saw the technology advancement of my presentation, a lot of you came and said, God, where did you find all this? I said, they exist in the market. And if we look just down the road from draw to today, the gap is enormous, so fast, huh? so fast. We have such a fast change. And the presentations, they're so easy passing the information and they incorporate visuals like images, videos, 
gifts, presentations, uh, are recommended not to exceed 20, 30 minutes, as we know. <laughs> so, and to involve a set of exercises and activities for students to practice, we know all that. It's becoming usual, but the online whiteboards and the visual canvas is become a little bit more complicated than, than that. I mean, we have diagram sketches, information, connection, allow teachers to reshare the context, and they can be used different purposes, such as mind mapping, doing interactive exercises, they're carrying out assignments, reviewing homework, brainstorming around lessons, giving feedback, interacting, and so on and so on. But the students generally prefer this way of teaching and the method because it gives them freedom and it's more convenient. We don't have anymore the teacher sitting behind the desk with a boring speech hiding behind the computer or not. It's starting to be eliminated. Creative teaching into the 21st century. I was in India recently in Pune and I had a presentation, or well, I didn't have it, we had it, from a young doctor who teaches in a mortuary. Their corpse, they cut and they open them up. Half the students used to faint. <laughs> First year students. The guy decided that he's going to incorporate music into his teaching. And he started singing the lesson. And it was so creative that his students loved it. And he wasn't singing any songs. He was singing, tell me a recent Irish male singer who's very famous, what's his name? Does anybody remember? Nobody? Hmm. I can't remember his name, the one with the red hair. That one. Sorry? Who? No, most times. So, the benefiting of the teacher behind that, it's actually less than their work. And it lessened his work because he could sing the lesson and his students engaged more. That is the teaching skill in the 21st century. It doesn't have to be complicated. It could be simple, neat, and clean. And the video lectures should be short and lengthy ones risk of losing students' interest. Therefore, I'm very good, very, very quickly going to flip the classroom, as they say. And best practices is the opposite of the traditional classroom concept. Therefore, in this process, students need to read review study material before the class. Effective techniques for the flipped classroom require online quizzes, for, um, you know, polls, infographics, mind maps, and word clouds. Learning simulation games, they interact between them in training simulations, in training entertainment, and simulation games. What we need to learn is what we're going to memorize in order to motivate us. That is important. And also the video conference technology will bring engagement and friendly competition and quick rewards because it has to be fast, it has to be effective, it has to be results orientated. And of course we have glass block. And that creates the development of, of information sharing. It brings self-learning, it benefits the educators from posting the course materials and blogs, and they can be on going and people can go back and refer to them. And of course, there is the live chatting. You know, we use Slack, WhatsApp, Facebook, Messenger, Skype, all sorts of platforms to communicate today. And the discussions between them, also the, 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 the students, we can review for tests or other assignments. And of course, discussion boards and forums, we're all used to those. We have different discussion boards for individual lesson topics that can be maintained. If I'm interested in photography, I can join one of them. If I'm interested in interactive modeling, I can go into that one. The Australians are quite advanced into that, by the way. And of course, the digital applications to facilitate online teaching. Google Classroom. Has anybody got experience from a Google Classroom? It's yeah. quite, quite good. 
the results show an average of 65 to 72 percent, which is very good so far. And also Kahoot. We all know Kahoot. Alkis yesterday was playing with Kahoot as well. <laughs> I'm not going to read this. I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. And of course, TED. I opened my screen with TED. TED is giving the organization's official app. It gives a lesson of plan ideas. It gives people a platform to bring their own experiences to their audience. It is revolutionizing the qualified PhD professor sitting behind the desk. Guys, it's time you stand up. It's, it's time you interact with your students. It's time you put your empathy into your deliverables. You can't keep going with the same mode. You need to change it. And that's a good example to use with your students. It's an amazing platform. It has a wide international global presentation from all walks of life. It's an American style. Sorry? It's an American style. It isn't an American style. It's a global <laughs> style. It is globalization. Yeah. Ted Greece is one of the most advanced platforms in presentations because it has such an intellect. And that now the Greek TED presentations are being translated into 36 languages. It is that popular. It is in an American style. And what's wrong if it's an American style and it works? The problem is, I, I can say, sorry to use that. Yeah, by all means. To, to, to give you a break, but, uh, The problem is that uh, sometimes when I'm, uh, I'm free to express my brilliant idea uh, and uh, not to be professional behind the desk, I agree with you. Uh, in this kind of conference, then there's not what we call the peer review. So I'm still remaining the, the professor, but I'm also the actor. Like it's like a, I have to make a, a cinema presentation or something in the theater. So I, I'm not only a professor, but I'm not I'm also playing a role. A role of someone who is interacting with the audience. I will never because I have a big name and I'm a big host professor. So I will never get a bitter interview about what I'm saying. If I say that uh, uh, but that is the only planet in the, in the system that uh, I'll try to argue about this uh, in, in, in an interactive way with the, the audience. Okay, uh, I will try to give a, a lecture. And so, in, 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 the, in the matter, it's the same uh, in the, it's the same as the professor behind the desk. I don't agree, I, I, I don't insist that it's a, the level is uh, low. Of course, I agree that that brilliant presentation, excellent uh, speakers, and uh, uh, but for some people, this American style of presentation is not a, something that you go deep in the knowledge. I didn't say I did not say that this is the best synthesis That's I've read. Idea. What I am saying is that this should affect us to incorporate some of those styles, some of those elements into the teacher. These are not. And exactly this is the pattern that we're trying to try, that we do not want to see a revolution, but an evolution. And we want to say what is really happening in this particular world of education and what are the effects that are coming into this digitalization and who are the players. And Ted is a player. And whether we like it or not, is a major player. Can, like can, like can, Microsoft is, like Apple is, like um, can, Samsung. Can, 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 well, it, well, yeah, okay. Then we have every node, Educreations, Socrative, your node Socrative, of course, yeah. and Edmondo. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Transformation in the issue with I don't know, I don't know the other three, really, but also that it is somebody needs provide you in a way most of its activities are behind the table. It's very limited if you are want to, to use it as a free tool. It's not only to, uh, really it's an app with a learning style. It's extremely limited if you use it as a free app. 
Yeah. Without paying. You have the freedom to use it as you wish. I am not implementing it. I'm but telling you that this is a fantastic tool. You can use it in its limitation or in its wide opening ability. It's up to you how you implement it. You may implement it with Socrative, with edge creations. I'm just saying what there is available. And of course, CISO, Siri, Slack, and Teacher Kit. You all know that. Yeah? Amazing, isn't it? So there is a workshop exercise. We're not going to do it. And I have a bibliography behind. Thank you very much.